So most everybody who's a dating or relationship coach will tell you that confidence is the number one thing needed or quality needed to attract a relationship in your life. And yet, from what I've observed, confidence can oftentimes be the hardest thing to obtain, whether you're a man or woman, because the reality is, is most of us are wounded on some level, not feeling good enough, not feeling likable, not feeling likable or not feeling lovable, not feeling likable, not feeling good enough. Did I get that right? And so today I brought a confidence therapist in, my dear friend, Kimmy Seltzer, to talk about how to create sexy confidence with a guy. So Kimmy, welcome. Hi, it is so special to be here, Jonathan, especially well, with you. <laughs> I'm excited to have you. So really, can yeah. you give your cliff note version of what you do? Because I really want to get into the nitty gritty of our talk today. I know, I know. Gosh, I only have a minute. Oh, I'm uh, so less than a minute. About <laughs> less than a minute. Okay, so as you indicated, I my name is Kimmy Seltzer. I'm a confidence therapist. I'm also a dating strategist. And so, yes, I work with a lot of singles and an image consultant. And that is all a mouthful to say that I help people look and feel their best so they attract what they want. And, you know, I, I've known Jonathan for quite a while, right? We've known each yeah. other for a long time. For over a decade. My, I've helped people in so many different ways. Um, and really a lot of it, because my professional experience has been vast, the passion really comes from my own story. And Jonathan, I know you know my story. I know yeah. your audience may not. And I just did a TEDx talk, actually. So you can check out my TEDx talk and find out more about my story. But I'll make this brief because it relates to what we're talking about. Okay. You know, the funny thing about confidence is that you could be really confident in one area of your life or even a time in your life. And that all could be shot if you go through something that can... Mm make you not as confident. And that yeah. certainly is what happened to me. And, you know, my backstory is I used to be this confident woman, married, um, having a traditional life in Chicago. And then we all pick up and we move across the country and we plop here to La La Land, Los Angeles. <laughs> we do what all the other people here do. We get a divorce. I'm joking. Obviously, there are other issues going on, right? And um, there I was, like all alone in my new castle, not knowing what to do with my new life. And my confidence, like, went from 10 to one, you know, yeah. just almost like in an instant. And I had to know how I was going to pick up the pieces of the mirror to feel whole again. And yeah. this is what we're going to talk about because my defining moment was this. And mm. up until then, I used to believe that you had to work from the inside out until that happened when I did everything I could to try to better myself on the inside. Mm. I'm a therapist for God's sakes. I should know mm. it. And I still couldn't get out of my own way. So, mm. um, what I did was something really untraditional. I went shopping. Okay, y'all? Okay. Like, this is what I do. I shopping there because I was this frumpy mom all mm. alone with these, like, ginormous black clothes. And what I realized is that, wow, <laughs> I'm this frumpy mom trying to go out and date. Like, who's going to love me? Like, I felt unlovable. So if I felt unlovable and not yeah. confident, how could someone else? Mm. And so... It wasn't until I went shopping, and I think I'm up-leveling myself, but no, yeah. I'm, I'm putting all the black clothes in my arms again, but they were three sizes too big because I hadn't seen my body. Hmm. This personal shopper, she came up to me. She's now my angel, I refer her as, and she said, ma'am, I think you should try this on. And she holds up this red dress that was kind of mm -hmm. like the color of your shirt, although it was a lot brighter. And I said, that's really sweet of you, but that's not my size. And that's certainly not my color. And she said, honey, that is your size. That is your color. Try it on. It was like, she hit me over the head with that red dress. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, it was like, I woke up. And so mm -hmm. I put the red dress on and I twirled around like Cinderella and mm -hmm. bam, I look in the mirror. I caught my mm -hmm. red dress moment and I realized wow, this whole time I just hadn't seen myself. I had to do something different. I had to see something different yeah. in order to really shift. So I went out in the world and I, y'all, I, I did everything in that red dress. I mm -hmm. marinated and I went to the grocery store. I went to the coffee shop. I went everywhere in that red dress. And, and I realized, and here's where we're going to get into the confidence piece, that yeah. there was a symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner when it came to mm. confidence that it wasn't superficial how we market ourselves yeah is 
like who we attract or not attract. Mm. And I realized I was scared. Mm. And so the black clothes was keeping me invisible from the okay. And so that's where my business actually first started to like flip. Mm -hmm. And I now flip the script. And instead of working from the inside out, I work from the outside in. Mm. Because it you was know, the quickest gateway into somebody's confidence. So it's, it's interesting. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah. I, um, Marie and I were watching Pretty Woman last night. Yeah. And, 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 and as you're sharing the story, it made me think about where, you know, she's obviously dressed in a hooker outfit in Beverly Hills and Rodeo Drive, trying to get someone to help her get a dress. And she has all this money. Right. And, and finally, you know, she goes to the manager of the store. She, he directs her to a woman who totally helps her out. And she's wearing this beautiful cocktail dress. She says, I've got a cocktail dress on. She goes shopping later. And as you see her trying on the different clothes and you see the progression of, of, of Julia Roberts along in the movie, primarily, not just, not just because of the clothes, but the clothes was kind of a reflection, I think, of her from the inside but it came from the outside first. Is That's kind of what I'm hearing from you, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. And that this isn't just kind of airy fairy stuff or, yeah. oh, just put on these clothes and you'll look fabulous. There's yeah. research that backs this up that when you wear certain clothes, it shifts the way that you perform, the signals that you send out into the world. And that, you know, when we talk about first impressions too, yeah. like think about that. That's the first thing that happens when we are trying to attract the opposite sex. Oh, I want to say something. Right? <laughs> and so, yeah, like, I mean, even there was a study done where they studied brains of people. And when people wore different clothes, they, they actually performed differently. Their body signals were different. And there's a term called enclothed cognition, that okay. when you wear certain things, your, your chemistry in your brain actually shifts and you perform differently. Like, look at Halloween. Halloween's yeah. the perfect example. Okay. You see these shy girls, right? And they're yeah. wearing these like vixen outfits, and all of a sudden they're they're different, you know, and they perform differently. And and there's something to that. And so there's nothing like seeing a woman when I do a makeover on them coming out of the dressing room and they're standing a little taller. Like your pretty yeah. woman metaphor well, you know, is exactly right. So um, you, I don't know if you remember, but when I ran into you at the airport, uh, yes, where, where was it? Where I forget. It was uh, was it Christmas or Thanksgiving or something? Yeah, like that's that. long ago. And I don't know if you remember. I was wearing a sport coat. I do remember. And so, and why I'm sharing this with you is after my divorce, I used to when I was married, I was the suit and guy kind of guy. I was the, the suit and tie. I was I was big from Sex and the City. I mean, that was the look I had. And when I went through a divorce and at the same time I lost my quarter million dollar year job, um, I emotionally retreated in, in, and I just didn't emotionally retreat. I physically retreated and I even retreated in the way I dressed. And I, and I live by the beach now and I was like jeans and flip flops. And one of the things that happened in my relationship with Marie is she said, you know, she made a comment. She goes, I think you would attract you know, more clientele if you got dressed up, you know, in your videos, because I was the shirt, you know, the guy that wore loud t-shirts kind of thing. And, and to some degree, I felt as though, like I, I resisted at first, but she was telling me how she'd even, you know, like even when her ex-husband and her traveled, he wore a sport coat. So I wore a sport coat. In fact, that might've been the first time she and I traveled together and I put on a sport coat and I felt different at the airport. I felt a little more polished. I mean, I still am who I am on the inside, but I just felt like, you know, maybe a little bit of ego was involved too, but I just felt a little better than just wearing jeans and flip-flops kind of thing. Am I making sense here? You are, and you're like just highlighting exactly what I am saying and helping people yeah. with, because when you also wear certain clothes it shifts yeah. your body language and how you feel about yourself and then you move through the world differently and and that's why i love the outside in approach because there's not too many things in life that's an instant hit an instant yeah. gratification right like all the, the inside job and believe me i believe in the inside job i'm a therapist so i yeah. i i am i think that that's just as important 
but it it is such a powerful thing when you shift the clothes that you wear to make you feel more confident and then people noticing you and now what's interesting in my store backstory yeah. as i went out into the red dress were wearing the red dress the, something happened that shocked me i actually didn't like being seen by the men mm. and i noticed oh. Yeah. No, no. And this is it, it actually because here I was like trying to focus on dating and getting the man. But really, I wasn't comfortable being seen. Mm. And that the clothes was almost like a black cloak to keep me invisible and insulated because I was scared. OK. And so I really had to get used to being seen. And I, I see this a lot with and I work with both men and women, by the way. Okay. So like I've seen it in both genders, but like, I know, there's a lot of women watching. I see this all the time where like you can be doing all the inner work and you're shifting and changing. But if you're not marketing yourself and flirting and putting on something that makes you have that like cab light signal to the men, then love might pass you by. So, OK, I want to share something with you and I want your take on this because I, I did a video uh, a couple months back. It said the four stages of a relationship. And and I want your take on this because you're a therapist and everything. I said stage one is personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, being your best self, you know, mm -hmm. healing from childhood wounds, healing from traumas, healing from a past relationship. That's stage one. And by the way, it's it's a really, it's a corner to a, a leg to a table. It's not really first or second. It's just a corner to, or a leg to a table. Number two is getting really crystal clear on who you are and what you want and learning how to vet I call it vetting, screening, filtering out. That's what I teach in my private coaching. That's the area I work on. The third leg, and again, it's not in any order, is how to attract men and women, and more importantly, how to flirt. Because the reality is, is these days, learning some basic flirting skills is rather necessary because of you know this paradox of choice we live in, this whole of, um, I'm going to say delusion that we have all these choices because of our smartphones that isn't there. And then lastly, the other corner or leg to the table is learning how to maintain a relationship and more importantly, make it thrive. So when I think of my that those four legs, I think of my piece is teaching how to vet and screen. And your piece is that confidence, flirting, you know, skills that is necessary. It is part of the process, whether we like it or not, it's needed. It's so true. I know I, I was talking to somebody, I have these, you know, free calls and it's so you're exactly right. I often ask people what it is they want. And I'd say 90% of the people think maybe they know what they want, but then when you really like get into it, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are somebody who is dating over the age of 40, yeah. like what we wanted back in our 20s, and I'm saying we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of age too, right? Yeah. Um, what we wanted in our 20s may be what we're thinking that we're wanting, but now in the second act, it's all different. Yeah. And actually, it's a lot freeing when you know that you could just date without getting attached, perhaps, and learning the skills, as you said, that will get you results in the second act. And so you're exactly right. Like I, I love, I do these flirt workshops all the yeah. time and it's amazing, you know, when people really focus more on leveraging skills and practicing things that yeah. either were dormant, right? Because maybe mm -hmm. you haven't flirted since you were 20 or yeah. maybe you never learned how to flirt at all. It's, it's, it's more fun. It's more present focused and that ends up getting to where you want to go so when I, you focus on that okay i want to lean into something dating without getting attached like mm -hmm. i think that's probably one of the hardest skills to learn and that is a skill i mean it is, it is something that requires some learning because you know not only is there a physical attachment that occurs especially when there's physical intimacy you know through oxytocin and pheromones mm -hmm. and dopamine and all that kind of stuff but then that love attachment that it happens you know because of wounds and and you know childhood wounds and traumas and such i think one of the hardest things to really develop is not a, not it's not about being detached but it's i think it's allowing 
not allowing yourself to get overly attached or maybe ahead of yourself before. Can you talk about that for a little bit? I love that you asked this, Jonathan. Yes, because okay. it's a topic. And um, any of you on here, high achievers, like come yeah. clean if you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw my side. I know I'm a high achiever. And one thing about high achiever is it being high achiever, what serves you in business is hard when it comes to dating because you have to be outcome oriented when you're a high achiever, right? You Maybe you get in your head or you're analyzing a lot and you're trying to think of all the right things and that kind of thing. And so it takes you out of being present. And so I think when we talk about dating without getting attached is how, how can you learn how to date yourself even? Yeah. And learning what's right or, for you and what's not working for you so that you can get to the outcome that you want. And, and that can be so hard when you're not used to that. You know what's so fascinating? When you look at the definition of flirting, I love it. I have to okay. talk. Okay, I don't know what it is. Now, if you look at the dictionary, it's to behave as though you are attracted to someone okay. without the serious intention of an outcome. So it's exactly what we're talking Is about. Is that really it? I had yeah. no idea. <laughs> so when I do flirt workshops, like it's the first thing that we talk about is like, well, what does flirting mean to you? And we have all these meanings attached to it and whatever you associate that with. And as a therapist, I know a lot of times we have some childhood stuff that's attached to it or, yeah. or, or fears that come up or we're older. And so, oh my God, me flirt at, you know, 50, like I can't do that. There's all these things that come up, but the truth of the matter is flirting is an energy and it's so, a playfulness that's very present. And so when you date and you flirt without getting attached to the outcome, you're very present. And mm -hmm. with that, you actually can know what you want because you're really focused on what it is you're, you know, set to do that day. Okay, so I got something for you. I, I think it was one of the what first. You got, <laughs> oh, okay, so so men these days seem to flirt through sexual innuendos, and like, you know, I mean, that seems to be more common than not. And and I'm guilty of this. You know, I'm guilty of throwing out a sexual innuendo to kind of gauge this person's, you know ability to be flirtatious with me or not. I don't know if you address that at all, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on men who do that as a way of flirting, but it's also a way to gauge your sexual, you know, baseline, if you will. Oh my God. Like this, <laughs> this, this question, this thing could be a whole like other talk, okay. right? Like, okay. Okay. So, okay. You know, there's so many layers. I love this question because and really how to react to it is really what I'm getting at is how should a woman react, you know, to that kind of to uh, kind of like the sexual innuendos. Yeah. And that sort of thing, you know, for, because for a man that's flirting to a woman that might be perceived as something different. You know, I don't think there's a black and white answer and I'm okay. going to answer it like this because okay. we each are different. We each have different journeys with what flirting is, how we take mm -hmm. in for how we, take in information, okay. how we send signals out, because there's always an interplay between men and women with this stuff too. Yeah. Because I, I don't like to just throw men under the bus and say, oh, well, he's just being too sexual. But what also like, what was the woman's part as well? And that's why I love getting men and women in a room together and like having these juicy discussions. Sure, but sure. It isn't an easy answer, but here's what I will say about that. Okay. Is I think at the end of the day, all women want to feel safe. I think mm. that's safe to say. Yeah. And if there hasn't been enough rapport, mm. connections, and feelings of safety, when a man then does a sexual innuendo, that's when it starts feeling unsafe. Um, I will also <laughs> By the way, say, I'm smiling because... I did throw a sexual innuendo to Marie on our first date. I mean, a couple uh -huh. hours in, but I felt like we were having good rapport with one another and she yeah. took it as playful as it was meant. I've certainly done it other times and it's been hit with a lot. I mean, you know, I was met with a lot of resistance and I take ownership of that. But I think you bring up a key, key point talking about feeling safe. Um, that's one of the greatest challenges we face in relationships today is a level of tr what I talk about more frequently in my videos is trust and trust isn't like just about fidelity. It's, does this person have my best interest at hand? Does this person, you know, 
care about my feelings as much as my own. And I think that's one of the challenges we face in the dating marketplace is in many cases, not enough trust or safety is being built. And yeah. where, and let me just say this one last thing, which is why I encourage my clientele to be more, you know, um, communicative about their needs, wants, and desires to build that level of connection with someone. So you're not giving your heart to some person that's just love bombing you, if you will. Yeah, it, it is so important. And, you know, when they're, is that level of trust between two people you can be playful you can yeah. be flirty and and by the way you know a lot i get uh, on the other side of the coin i get a lot of women who wonder well you know can i throw out sexual innuendos like, <laughs> when is it okay for me to send out those signals and am i going to be seen as you know inappropriate or whatever it is and you know that's why i'm saying that it's such a dance between two people and it also depends on people's history. You mentioned trust. Yeah. Well, as a therapist, you know, it's an under it's understanding also people's backstories. So if you're listening to this and saying, oh my God, that's really uncomfortable if a man after just you know eight hours of a date to do a sexual innuendo with me, that that's might be part of her journey and her backstory. And maybe she, you know, got hurt in previous relationships. So her guard's going to go up and she's going to take it a little slower. Right. So yeah. I think it's different for everybody, but the bottom line is I yeah. think everyone needs to build that rapport and feel comfortable in their own skin and know what they want. Yeah. And that's all part of the equation. So Kimmy, you work with men. And I, I have do. a question. I want to actually <laughs> lean into this because um, there's this almost expectation that men are the leaders of the relationship and they're supposed to be confident. And if he doesn't have the confidence to walk up to me and say, hi, he's, you know, oh. he's not good enough for me kind of thing. You work <laughs> with men. Yeah. So you hear their inner thoughts. Would you be open to sharing that for our you know, audience here, because oh, I think it's question. important to talk about this and con with respect to confidence. <laughs> it's a great question. You know, I do these um, co-ed dating retreats. I think that's when I met you at the airport. I was about to do my dating yeah. retreat. Yeah. And, you know, I, it, it's co-ed. And so it's so fun when we kind of debunk each other's myths, because we yeah. all think we're all so different, you know, men and women, but at the end of the day, we're all, we're all the same. And, and here, here's the, the common denominator between men and women. Yeah. Fear. We all have fear. Yeah. And, and we all have fear in the approach. And so here's what I'm hearing from men. And here's what I hear from women. Okay. So the men, you know, they'll walk into a bar or a date or in the field and they'll say that women have all, the RBFs on, right? Do, do we all know what? RBF oh, yeah. Is? Well, I know what it is. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that here? You can. Oh, by the way, this channel, we curse up the yin yang. Not the oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know if like, okay, okay. So um, resting <laughs> bitch face, if, if yeah. those of you who don't know what that is, it's real because I also go out in the field and I help women flirt. And so right. I see it. Yeah. But I'm sorry, there's also resting grimace face on men. So I don't like okay. to always, you know, blame women. But the, the fact of the matter is, and this goes back to the outside, it's not just the clothes you wear, but it's the attitude that you have. It's the body language and the signals that you're sending out. And so everyone's looking very serious or they're yeah. looking down or they have a frown on their face. So men complain. It's like, well, they're not approachable. Like yeah. they look, you know, or they're cackling in the corner. And they're complaining about men like they're, you know, they're not open. They're not smiling, that kind of thing. And then the women come to me and they're like, well, the men aren't alpha enough. You know, I want a guy who's strong and who can yeah. just come up to me and, and, and say hi and not be intimidated by me. But if the women are intimidating <laughs> and the men are intimidated, guess what's yeah. happening? No one's meeting anybody. Yeah. No stalemate. <laughs> so Here's how I see it. Both genders have a responsibility and approachability. And it's like some, we all have our own things that we could do to really open things up and give signals out to the world. Like women, you've got to understand, like men want to please us and they're yeah. looking for signals that we're open to talking and open for business, so to speak. And it's almost like you have to hit them over the 
head with a bat to say it. Now, what we think is like over the top is, is actually right for the guys. And so, you know, we may think we're flirting or sending signals out and the guy thinks it's a fluke. You know, they don't want to be rejected. So they're looking yeah. for like signals from us. And, and so it's really fun practicing that with each other. And just like ladies, for those of you listening, like, do you even notice who's noticing you? Like when you're going to the market, and by the way, hmm. men are everywhere. They're yeah. everywhere. They're not just on the apps. They're not just like, okay, that's the thing. People are going, well, now it's time to date. I am dating now. And they're swiping on their phone. But everywhere and anywhere are chances to meet men. And so- But there's I, no good I, men where I live, Kimmy. There's no good men where I live. Like, Can I tell a funny story around that? Yes, please. Example, yeah. So, oh, CC sees a lot of RBFs during work. Yeah, like they're all over the place. Like, <laughs> I love it. So um, there was a woman that, you know, she she called me up. We had our first call together. And she said exactly what you just said, Jonathan. There, uh, there's no good men out there. I scoured yeah. the earth. I know every man in this town. I've dated all of them online. I see them over and over again. I give up. And I, she's like, you're my last hope. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. So she, she decides to hire me. And I said to her, um, I want you to um, do something for me. Um, sorry, I'm getting this weird thing. Um, I want you to do something for me. Your first homework assignment is to go out into the world. And I want you to take the same walk that you do every single day at work because she she walked at work. And okay. I want you to just notice who's noticing you. I want you to open up. I want you to smile. I want you to see everybody around you. She's like, okay, but like I, I do this every single day and there's no one. I, I said, well, I believe you that you believe that there's no one. Mm -hmm. But just try this and then report back to me something. Okay. And so a week later, she comes back. She says, Kimmy, do you have a voodoo doll? I said, I don't have a voodoo doll. What happened? And she <laughs> said, well, I did what you said. Like I, I, I was smiling. I was looking around and I noticed this gentleman sitting on the bench. And you know what? He looked at me and you know what? He calls me over and oh. you know what? All of a sudden I'm in a conversation. And before I knew it, Kimmy, he asked me out and Kimmy, I already had a date with him and I really like him. <laughs> that guy ended up being her boyfriend, her long-term boyfriend. I want now, to post this. Uh, yeah. It's raining men. <laughs> you know, I say, uh, by the way, I always say in my videos, it's raining great men. It's raining men. You know, I, I want to lean into this because I, I think many people, you know, I, I always say most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. You know, and sure, there's the users out there, there's the players, there's the narcissist and so forth and so on. Yeah, but yeah. most men are good guys. Yes. They're just actually bad at dating. And I'll even be candid with you and everyone that's watching. You know, with Marie, I saw her dating profile and I thought, oh, she's Beverly Hills glam. She's not <laughs> going to be want me. And the funny thing was she read my profile, author, speaker, coach. I'm not going to want her. You know, mm -hmm. and it's interesting how we can, in our own minds, reject, you know, the belief that there's good people out there that will actually appreciate us when we don't make even the effort for it. And thankfully with her and I, we made effort towards one another. Can you lean into that for a second? Yeah, that's a great point is that everybody is so worried about what other people think mm -hmm. rather than going after what they want. Yeah. And that's half the battle and why I love like just even focusing on your body language, your flirt skills, you know, and, and worry about you. I'll never forget. There was um, another incident where this woman, I was out flirting with her and we first went shopping. So I do this like shopping wing girl stuff a lot yeah. um, in person. And um we, we go to the store and we get her some fabulous stuff. And I always get people a red dress moment. So by the way, ladies, those of you listening, 
men love red, just so you know. Oh, while like, you do that, I want to find something. So keep talking. Yes, about that. yes. Okay. <laughs> while Jonathan is it while he's not listening, um, they 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 love red. There's scientific proof that when a man sees like anything red on a profile or walk in a room, like he will click on, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so Marie wore a red dress to the yeah. wedding we both went to, and she was a knockout red dress. In fact, I highly recommend. That's my favorite. Yeah. Well, black and red I like on her. <laughs> right. Well, that's my story about the red dress in the beginning. That's why I wanted to tell it because yeah. um, everyone needs a red dress moment. And it's a metaphor to really like being seen. And anyway, I was shopping with this woman. We get, we, we get the, the red dress with her and we get her all dolled up and we go out into the world and she's like, oh my gosh, what is everyone thinking? Men are looking at me. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to attract this kind of guy. I don't meet guys in bars. Like she was going way ahead of herself. I said, can you just stay here and, and play with me for a little bit? <laughs> and so she walks into the room with her red dress and guys were looking at her. And so she had to like just embrace it in that moment. And she, she started like really having fun. And we met these amazing men and, and we were talking and instead of getting ahead of it and worrying about like what guy's intentions were or anything like that, um, she meets this fantastic guy. That guy, again, ends up being her boyfriend long-term. And it was because she let go of the outcome. She let go mm -hmm. of what intentions other people had and she went after what she wanted and i think that is the big distinction of and, and just highlighting kind of like what you said yeah. you and maria could have just sat there in fear and oh well how could she want me or how could he want her or all yeah. of these stuff we all have that in our heads but instead you just met you know it's interesting because one of the things i appreciate about marie is that you know, she has this confidence, but I, I said this early on, I could get the sense she wasn't attached to the outcome. And occasionally I recommend the book. And while I'm not, I don't love everything about the book, Why Men Love Bitches. Oh, I, I love, love that book. Well, I don't love everything about it, but 90% of it I do. Yeah. Because I always say bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, yes. And what I mean by that is that, that there's a sense of like, look, I'm not going to give my power away to another person. And I think, sadly, both men and women in the dating process oftentimes give their power away to the other person, meaning they make their happiness dependent upon the other person. And so, I, you know, confidence is 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 non-attachment to the outcome. Confidence is self-love. I talk about this and that's why I wrote a book about, so there, I wrote a book about self-love because when we love our, and I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir by saying this to you, but I'm saying this for everyone. Yeah. When we genuinely love ourselves and we're not attached to the outcome, the process of dating or really the process of connecting with another person becomes a lot easier it actually becomes a little bit more enjoyable. Um, whereas if you get attached to the outcome, you get hurt and you feel like you get hurt because it doesn't work out. And if this happens enough times, it wears on your self-esteem. So um, anyway, just wanted to say yeah. that. <laughs> Can I piggyback off that? I love everything yeah. that you said. And I have such a simple word that I use and because I call myself a confidence therapist, it's funny because a lot of times people will come to me, you know, can you help me find a man, help me find a woman, but really in the end they find themselves. Yeah. And, and you know, this, and it's part of what we're talking about, but I, I simplify things. And it's just like in my story, I don't believe there's one person listening to this. That's not confident but that there's an area in your life where you haven't had experience in or positive exposure of. Yeah, and yeah. what I mean by that is that like me, I considered myself a really confident woman before the divorce. And, and then I'm supposed to go out there and date as an older woman. Well, I wasn't mm -hmm. feeling very confident because guess what? I never did it. I was a relationship gal. I never dated, mm, you know? Yeah. And so how was I supposed to feel confident? And so how do you get confident? 
you practice and yeah. you do it over and over again. And that's why like I'm very action oriented when it comes to this stuff. And I like just teaching people skills so they gain the confidence through practice. And guess what? By doing that, you break old habits because your habit might be to be in your comfy cocoon, to be in analysis paralysis. Yeah. Like you can just sit here and listen to stuff all day long. But at what point do you take action? Yeah. You and I have a mutual friend, uh, uh, Trip Kramer. And Trip uh, has, a, I mean, he's a confident coach for men. And when he tells his story, he was the quintessential nerd. You know, I mean, he looked like, I think, Skippy from that show with uh, Michael J. Fox or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know, the true nerd and or, or the other show, um, Saved by the Bell. Um, he looked like the nerd. And he said for two years straight, he all he did was walk up to women and just say hi. Yep. And and then after hi, he was like, if they stuck back to him, he didn't know what to say. So he practiced the next thing and the next thing. And within two years, I mean, mind you, that's it seems like a long period of time, but he was doing this on occasion, you know, once a week. He built up the inner confidence so he could just communicate effortlessly. I, I believe like anything in life, it takes practice to actually get good at something. And that includes whether it's flirting, whether it's walking up to some, dropping the hanky, as it used to be called. Um, today, I, I believe that's a necessity if we want to um, be able to achieve a relationship at some point. Yeah, it is about practice. And it's also about letting go. Mm. You know, I think as we get older, we have filters that okay. develop over time, right? Because yeah. we've all been hurt. We've all experienced things. I love kids. Kids are the best like role models. Yeah. Because, you know, you watch a four or five-year-old on the playground. It's not like they see somebody like little Johnny playing in the sandbox and say, oh, I shouldn't go up to him. He looks really busy. Maybe I'll wait until he's... No, he just goes up. Hey, can I play? Yeah. And so like what happened... What happens to us? Why why can't we just walk into a bar and say, hi, happy Friday, want a drink? Like whatever it is. And, and that playfulness, that curiosity is so beautiful. And that's part of letting go, letting go of like worrying so much, again, what other people are viewing of us, but just having that desire to be. I have something. So just to exemplify this. By the way, we're going to take questions in a moment. Uh, we are, but can, okay. I, can I share a story? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these are cat ears, ladies. Okay. And I love cat ears. And I, I always like have people wear them in my retreats and workshop because it's very playful. And it started from a time that I coached this woman and she was so worried about talking to strangers or approaching mm -hmm. men. And she was really scared. And, um, we, I, <laughs> we end up crashing this party and it was okay. around Halloween and they all had ears on. And I said, well, let's just go up and say hi. Like maybe, you know, they have some extra ears for us or I don't know. <laughs> and she goes, but we can, it's not, our party. I said, well, we won't know until we ask whether or not we can join. And quite honestly, we're kind of cute. Why wouldn't they want us at the party? So okay. I crashed, we crashed the party and they loved it. Like they, they did in fact, give us ears and we wore the ears the entire night. And hmm. what it did for my client was something astounding. It gave her costume confidence. Mm. And I, I use that word a lot. Like what's your dating costume? What's your confidence, you know, your costume confidence, because it was a prop that she mm. had that a lot of guys kept commenting on and she got to be more playful when she wore the ears. And so it was this kind of aha moment for her mm. realizing everything was just all in her head. We always think that things are a bigger deal in our head than the reality and then mm. how other people view us. Mm. And actually there's psychological biases that back that up. I'm not just yeah, making yeah. it up. Yeah. And so what, what that means is the more that we can just get out of our own way and get into the world, so much opportunity happens. And I have so many stories about this when people meet people while I'm coaching them and people think I like planted them. I'm like, I don't, I don't know that many people. I wish I did, but yeah. it just shows you how that energy can just draw people to you. 
You know, when I going back to um, when I was back in my suit and tie days, I know, you know, there was a period of time where I did go out dressed in that Mr. Big from Sex and the City look. And, and I share this because in a way I got some attention because people thought I looked like Chris Note. So, you know, and especially when the show was out. But I, I appreciated the compliment, you know, men appreciate you know men don't always accept compliments but then again women aren't always good at accepting compliments either but there's just something about when you when you're you know i don't want to say you're looking your best but you you'd make a little extra effort and and you're acknowledged for it it's a really nice feeling you know yes. um so hey we've got some questions that come in do you mind if we know, check them out so i'm going to go back here so bear with me um we had a couple questions early on from there we go rita wrote this question she said how to present how to be my desired relationship looks wait how to present how my desired relationship looks like in a text on dating apps without sounding overly serious or awkward could you give an example desired relationship looks like in a text on dating apps without sound. Hmm. Well, it's almost an oxymoron to me because yeah. <laughs> yeah, talking yeah. about a relationship is serious. Yeah. And so I guess I'll start out by that. And I don't know, like it would be interesting to see the progression of a DM exchange. I do this with my clients. Like I go into Bumble accounts and I go, I, I see what your conversations are, y'all. And I'm yeah. going to tell you right now, a lot of them look like LinkedIn exchanges like okay. right? like there's no flirting going on there's there's these like big lofty philosophical questions like what are you looking for in a relationship and how was your weekend and like <laughs> how's your how day going supposed to, yeah how's your day going and and so i guess i'm going to answer this in a way of lightness and that if you you know everyone has good intentions going in. And if you're relationship minded, you'll want to know if someone else is looking for a relationship. But here's the thing, ladies, like yeah. there's no guarantee. If a man says, I'm looking for a relationship, that doesn't guarantee you a relationship. And so in those beginning stages, it, I always recommend just see if you like each other. <laughs> so you know, like let's try to connect because a lot of magic can happen. And there's phases, like you said, yeah. in dating, there's also phases in a relationship. And so it, it depends on where in the phase you're engaging with these conversations and, you know, and, and, and pacing as well. Well, I want to jump in this for a second because the word relationship to a man might be different to a woman. Yes. And yes. so I think the real problem is saying the word relationship. I think it's better to, and this is what I teach in my coaching, is yeah. establish what your standard is. In other words, describe what a relationship looks like for you and see how the other person responds because sadly a lot of men these days are only capable of a casual relationship they're only capable of a situationship they're only capable of friends mm -hmm. with benefits but they say i want a relationship well yeah if, if you're if your idea of relationship is this and his idea is this you know what that space in between is called a lot of drama because there's not real you know, clarity. So I think it's important to establish. And if, if let's say it's just on your dating app, then like my date, my profile on match.com said, clearly, I am either looking to move in together or getting married with someone. That was my first line. I'm establishing my standard right from the get go. And I'm like, if that doesn't fit what you want, swipe the or, you know, pass me by. I think it's important to establish what your desires are. Now, the challenge with midlife folks, a lot of men don't want to get remarried. So I think clarity on what a serious relationship looks like for you, you don't have to write it down, but at least know what it is within yourself. And that's my invitation to you, Rita. Um, we got another question from Wanda. Okay. Question. Is it normal to hope a man has imagination to come up with an opening line without using my body part? <laughs> oh, Wanda! Has this been happening a lot? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, gosh, I hope a man has imagined to come up with an opening line without using a body part. Well, I will just say, I mean, um, 
not all men do that. Okay. So if you are encountering that, you got to look at where you're hanging out, who you're attracting. And again, I always, I always tell people too, we can't change those men. Like they're going to be who they are, but you can do something different to get a different result. And so whether that be the way that you're marketing yourself, the way the the rooms that you're hanging out with, the apps that you're on, like it's looking at things that you can shift and change. You know, this is where and why I like talking about just being a strategist and and having habits, because you might be doing the same thing. Maybe you're on the same app. Maybe you're trying the same DM exchange over and over again. Yeah. And you're getting the same result. Well, you know, that's the definition of insanity. So break up that pattern, like do something different to see if you have other guys and more gentlemen come in. Because- oh, I've got something for you. <laughs> so I have, an, I have an acronym that I teach. It's called NICE, N-I-C-E. And it stands for, N stands for name because most dating apps has a name mm-hmm. associated with it. So name. So you say something, you start with, you know, hey, Jonathan, hey, Kimmy, something along those lines. And the I stands for inquisitive. Ask a question. Be be curious. I think Mm -hmm. being curious is a lot deeper than just being surface. The C stands for compliment. You know, men and women like compliments. And it doesn't have to be about a body part or what you're wearing. My favorite compliment is, and and I'm going to say this to you, Kimmy, you have great energy. You know, you have great energy. And that's one of my, that's the thing I look for in a person. Do they have energy? And the Mm -hmm. E stands for enthusiasm or an emoji or something to show energy. So nice name, inquisitive compliment, enthusiasm. I think that's a great way to start a conversation, especially in the dating world. And then see where, because of that question, hopefully you go down some rabbit holes with even better questions along the way. Um, by the way, Jade says, J.A. does look like Mr. Big. You do. <laughs> you totally do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and CC says, yes, suit and tie is a great look. So we have a question from Elder. Uh-huh. Because of emotional baggage, I keep sabotaging oh. every dating situation and relationship. I just started seeing a guy who is nice, but I feel the need to sabotage it. How can I change this? Uh, Kimmy, you're the therapist. What's the answer? Oh, Elder, I'd love to help you get in touch with me. I'll, I know I'll help you. Um, no, this, and honestly, this is really common. And, you know, when you have had stuff happen in the past, the fear factor is so strong. Um, you know, I, I've done whole workshops on just the, the five top dating fears and, mm you know, really deep diving into each of those fears and how they surface when it comes to dating. And, you know, without knowing you, Elder, and your history, um, what I will say is that there are definite things that you can do. The the good news about it is that you're aware of it. Like, that's huge Mm -hmm. because I'll I'll work with a lot of people and they're blaming the men or the fact that you know that that's what's happening is really that awareness piece is half the battle. Mm -hmm. It's really understanding what to do about it to override it. I'll share a quick story of somebody I worked with, actually, who had that exact same thing. She, every... Every time she would meet a guy, um, she would first in the history before I started working with her, she would attract these kind of emotionally unavailable guys. And they 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 had different costumes on, right? Like what, some were narcissists, some were fixer uppers, some were noncommittals, you know, like all these like different things. But the truth was that she wasn't available. Hmm. And, you know, we always attract who we are. And it, the light bulb kind of went off and, and she, we realized in her history that she had some abuse that mm-hmm. happened when she was young and she was just replicating the pattern. Mm-hmm. And so she was attracting things that were familiar to her. You know, people either would be not available to her or abusive. And so I just, we started working on just dating without getting attached that whole system that we were talking about before and really knowing what she wanted and feeling good about herself without getting attached to the outcome so that she could just learn to be okay in the moment with men but also know what to look for 
and what healthy men were because she never she never saw it. So guess what happened? She comes across after dating all these people, a healthy guy. And guess what? Mm -hmm. They hit it off. And guess what? They start dating. And in the middle of it, just like Elder, I think that's your name. Um, yeah. She says, Kimmy, I, I can't do this. I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm going to run. And she, she found herself wanting to self-sabotage it because she was too scared. She, she's like, I'm too scared that something's going to happen. And so it was good that we were like working through it and we worked through it. And after working through it, it was such a beautiful thing for her that she stuck with it and she was learning how to be vulnerable with him and talk about her feelings and they worked through it together. Yeah. They're still together today, two years later. And he's a great guy. He's not unavailable. He's very available, but they had to work through it together. So it's a process. And I'm just sharing that story that it's never too late to work on this stuff. I want to add something. I know when my clients meet a secure man that if they're, you know, default of maybe anxious behavior or avoidant mm -hmm. behavior. And I say default versus it's the prevalent, you know, behavior or experience. It's more that's where their default is. When you're with a secure person, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really helps, you know, you might sabotage, but when you're with the right guy, and I, this is something I wrote in my book, if you're speaking sincere and from the heart, you're not going to scare off the right guy. You know, if it's sincere, you can't really say the wrong thing to the right person. So um, it's okay to be that way. And, you know, at the same time, like you said, you're aware of it. And just know when you're with the right person, if you do mess up, it's not going to sabotage the relationship unless you're unless you're really trying to sabotage the relationship, but that's right. what you talk about. So we got a couple more questions I want okay. to take before we wrap up today. We got Sweet Art says, question, what's your advice if I bring up a topic or an issue talking about my feelings and he is so quick to shut down and say not to bring it up again? Is it a run moment or can it be overcome? Ooh, I like that one, Sweet Art. Ooh, okay, well, um... First of all, again, it's hard to give advice without knowing more. Yeah. And so I guess my question to you is, is this happening a lot? Is this a pattern? Um, what is it that you're saying that causes him to shut it down? Is it is it like the same kind of thing that you're trying to share that he shuts it down? And then the third thing I would ask is what's keeping you in it? Mm -hmm. Like if this is somebody who keeps dimming your light and shutting down your voice, what's the benefit from staying in it? And I always tell people like, you know, like in the financial world, we do cost benefit analysis. I like to do a cost benefit analysis on situationships and relationships, because there's always something that keeps people in things that benefits you. And then there's costs. And when the costs outweigh the benefits, and it's not necessarily how many are on the list, but how heavy things are, then that's when you have to assess what is right for you and, and what's serving you. Yeah. Um, there's a lot I want to say to that, but I want to take this one last question because we're going to be wrapping up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, great answer there. So here's a great question to wrap up with our tonight. So question, Melanie says, after finding a good Ooh. guy, how do we keep it fresh and flirty? Well, that's your area of expertise. So oh what's my the secret to keep it gosh. fresh and flirty? <laughs> um, well, first of all, you should never stop dating your partner, ladies, no matter what phase you are in your relationship. And whether you're in the courting phase, you're trying to capture a guy, whether you're trying to keep the guy or whether you're mm -hmm. in it and you've been at it for a long time. Um, and so one of the things that I tell people who are in relationships, who are trying to like keep it fresh and flirty is always going back to basics of where you started. And so like one thing is just getting back to what attracted you to begin with. Like, did you used to go out to dinner and dress up and have sexy time? Or like, are you just sitting in front of the TV and eating Chinese food in your sweats all day long. You know, so, like Even just the mere point of dressing up and having an occasion to dress up will make you both feel amazing. Another thing that I always recommend is the element of surprise. 
I love surprises because that that's sexy, right? The spontaneity and the playfulness of a surprise is is really super sexy and fun because the problem with couples is they get caught in the daily routine, the humdrum of of doing the same thing over and over again. So anytime you can switch things up, be spontaneous, have fun. And also the third thing I'd recommend is don't forget the power of body language, ladies. Mm -hmm. You know, it might not even be something you actually have to do together or purchase or buy. It could be a simple look. It could be a little twinkle in your eye. It could be a rub on his thigh. Oh, I, got something, I got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite about? thing, my favorite thing Marie does is like sometimes when we watch TV in bed, she always, she the way our TV is, she's behind me. And she always like comes up like, right, like the way a cat would. It like kind of comes up. She doesn't purr, but she just like wants to snuggle with me in this cute little way. And it's kind of say, we, you know, like, will you hug me kind of thing? But I, mm. I like it because she's making this effort. The other thing I wanted to add to this is I, what I appreciate most is that she uses the word gratitude with me. Mm. We use the word gratitude with each other all the time. I'm not a big proponent of saying thank you. I prefer using the word gratitude, appreciation, or grateful. And when, and that's a practice. I mean, we use that regularly because I think when you can be in a state of gratitude for someone, it keeps it, it. It's in its own way. It keeps the fire burning because when you're in a state of appreciation, the light never goes out. So I'm a big proponent of using grateful gratitude and appreciation frequently when you're in a relationship. And when you're doing that, wear a dress, put a twinkle in your eye. <laughs> red dress, red different. dress. <laughs> <laughs> wear a red dress. Yeah, red, red, red dress. Oh. Oh. Well, Kimmy, I so appreciate you. I know you have a gift. I'm going to post it right here, but can you talk about it for yes. everyone that's a gift right here? Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, all this talk about the outside in and the style, I wanted to provide um, a gift. I have a sexy body shape guide for you ladies um, where I'm very scientific in the way I approach clothes. And this is like such a great thing that all of you can even do at home and do a closet audit where if you download this guide, it will teach you how you measure yourself. And by the way, it has nothing to do with your weight. It has to do with bone structure where okay. you measure your, your shoulders, your waist and your hips. And that will determine what your body type is. And once you know what your body type is, my guide goes into what clothes flatter your body type and what clothes to stay away from. And so it's a great way to just kind of do a little closet audit, see what clothes are fitting you, what to get rid of. Hopefully it'll energize you to purge and then splurge on something new that'll energize you. And, um, you know, if you want to take it further and you want more help, I actually have a cool workshop coming up April 11th. Uh -huh that we'll post here. Um, and I am actually going to be talking about mastering your great first impression with your style, with your body language, and kind of giving those signals out to men so that you land dates. And the workshop is co-ed, y'all. So there'll be men in there that you, can, <laughs> that you can get direct feedback on. That's April 11th, and it's Stop Hating Dating series. Um, and we'll post a link in there as well. Yeah, uh, for everyone really quickly, as soon as this broadcast ends, I'll have a link in the show notes. I'll have a link as the first uh, comment to uh, Kimmy's style guide. And then later I will do some posts about the April 11th workshop. So we are listen to some of these comments. Uh, they, CC says, thank, this was so good. Thank you both. Uh, Melanie says, uh, yes, 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 thank you. And Jade says, thank you for the gift, Kimmy. You're um, welcome. You're you know, welcome. sweetheart, I, I know this has been a long time coming for us to get together like this. Uh, it was so great. I so appreciate. I'm very grateful that you came on. Um, I'm very grateful for the, the, the content you shared, because I think this is really important to understand our inner confidence can start both from the inside out and the outside in. And I'm really happy that you leaned into this today. So can I wrap up this video by giving you a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? Oh, 
I'm giving you a hair a bear hug back. Oh, and, and, thank you. and as a woman, big kisses. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Every I want to thank uh, Melanie and Elena and one and our Facebook wow. group and Rosa and Patricia and Jade and Cece and Jameson and Michelle and uh, Elder and Mimi and everyone that joined us. Wanda, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Say goodbye now. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye. Let me click this.